Hello and welcome to another of our introductory guides to temperature metrology. And in less than 10 minutes, I'd like to introduce you to stirred liquid baths. Well, why use a stirred liquid bath? Well, portable temperature calibrators like dry rocks can be very useful for checking and calibrating industrial temperature sensors. But if you want to calibrate laboratory thermometers to higher accuracy or longer thermometers, we may need a liquid bath. Whilst the performance of dry blocks can be very good, stirred liquid baths can offer superior temperature stability, uniformity and greater immersion depth. So when we come to think about liquid baths for laboratory use, perhaps the most important consideration is that of thermal performance. If the temperature in the bath is not both stable and uniform, then there'll be differences in temperature between the thermometers. So rather than use a simple tank with a stirrer, the best laboratory baths will use a sophisticated design to give the lowest temperature differences and the best performance. In the figure here, we have a parallel tube bath. In one tube, we see uh, the heating, the cooling and the mixing taking place. And in the second parallel tube, that's where the thermometers to be calibrated can be located. So let's look at a real bath. Here's one. This is the front tube where the thermometers are. Out of sight is the rear tube where the mixing, cooling and heating takes place. Or we can adjust the flow of the liquid with a flow control in the front of the calibration bath. Second thing to consider for laboratories is depth. We want an immersion depth that we would say at least 300 millimetres. Well, it's really important that the bath is sufficiently deep to handle the thermometers that we wish to calibrate. So how do we use a liquid bath? Well, the test probes should be located at an adequate immersion depth. That's to ensure the probes are in thermal equilibrium with the bath. And a quick test to see whether we are in thermal equilibrium is to withdraw our probe one centimetre and see if the temperature changes. If the probe's been immersed deep enough, we shouldn't see a change in temperature. How do we use a liquid bath? Well, we need to support the thermometers. They can be held from the top, perhaps with a simple stand, or they can be lowered and placed into an equalizing block. And usually these can be adjusted in the usually these can be adjusted to different positions. And it's a good idea to record where the thermometers are so that we can later reproduce the conditions of test. Unfortunately, there's no single fluid that we can put into a liquid bath to use from minus 80 to 300 degrees C. Our website does have a liquid selection guide, but when you're using stirred oil baths, stirred liquid baths, you always need to plan for ventilation and fume extraction. Liquid baths can be commonly used to minus 80 or perhaps a little lower, but they're rarely used above 300 degrees C. That's because the fumes in the bath, the risk of the oil igniting is too high. So for higher temperatures, we could use a fluidized calibration bath or a salt bath. And with a liquid bath, we're going to be doing comparison calibration. So a calibrated reference thermometer should be placed alongside the test thermometer. And the test thermometer should be compared against the reference. We want traceable calibration. So traceability is defined in the International Vocabulary of Metrology as the property of a measurement result, whereby the result can be related to a reference through a documented unbroken chain of calibrations, each contributing to the measurement uncertainty. So in our traceable calibration, we're comparing the reference thermometer we're comparing the test thermometer to the reference thermometer and we need to consider the measurement uncertainty. So the uncertainty of the calibration will be a combination of the uncertainty of the measurement from the reference thermometer and the uncertainty arising from the calibration bath. We can determine the uncertainty of the calibration bath by considering factors that could contribute to the test probe not being at the same temperature as the reference thermometer. So certainly for a liquid calibration bath we would include the temperature stability of the calibration bath, 
horizontal temperature differences in the bath, that's radial non-uniformity, and vertical temperature differences in the bath, that's actual non-uniformity. And so we can evaluate these problems with a thermal survey or an evaluation of the bath. We'd normally use a pair of thermometers. We can survey the bath vertically. We can swap the thermometers around and look at horizontal differences and determine the temperature non-uniformities. Or we can determine the stability, the change in temperature over time. We would choose a time longer than the calibration period, typically 30 minutes. So here I'm starting to gather sources of uncertainty. So I've got my radial non-uniformity, my actual non-uniformity, and my stability. And these values are taken from the thermal survey of the calibration bath. And they have a rectangular distribution, so we divide by root 3. So here, as so I'm adding into my simple uncertainty budget, the uncertainty of the reference thermometer and the instrument, including drift. So I've taken that value from a calibration certificate. So because it's come from a calibration certificate at k equals 2, it's a normal distribution, and I can just divide that by 2. And now I can combine uh, the uncertainties and then increase that to the expanded uncertainty. You can see in my example here, the uncertainty is 0 0.009 degrees C, in my simple example. So what else might need to go into an uncertainty budget? Well, we may need to consider immersion depth, hysteresis, drift of the standard. It's a case of looking at the calibration and identifying what might introduce an uncertainty. The question we often get is, does a comparison bath need a calibration certificate? Now, the measuring instrument and the reference thermometer, they need a calibration certificate from an accredited laboratory. But the bath needs a thermal survey, and that should be carried out by the user under the actual conditions of use. So the calibration bath itself would not normally be calibrated. Where to find more information about uncertainty? Well, there's a very good beginner's guide to uncertainty of measurement that NPL publish. Uh, UCAS and the United Kingdom publish the Expression of Uncertainty and Confidence in Measurement, M3003. And then there's the GUM, the Guide to Expression of Uncertainty of Measurement from BIPM. All of these documents are available free of cost online. So here's an extract from our uh, schedule for our laboratory. In our laboratory, we can calibrate platinum resistant thermometers in fluid baths with uncertainties from uh, 4 to 7 millikelvins from minus 80 to 300 degrees C. In addition to comparison calibration, Liquid baths are generally used for comparison calibration, but you can use them for other purposes. Uh, for example, you can create and maintain a water triple point cell uh, in a liquid bath. And there are accessories for black body calibration. Finally, some tips. Don't site a liquid bath close to air conditioning. Uh, the flow of the air can disturb the performance. You do need to check and adjust the flow. The, the viscosity of the liquid will change with temperature, so keep an eye on that. And don't forget the overflow. Liquids expand as the temperature increases, so you need to be able to catch any excess liquid from the overflow. It's a good idea to insulate the bath uh, at low temperatures. One way is to use a simple piece of styrofoam, pierce the thermometers through the insulation, and then that will uh, help the bath reach a lower temperature, and also reduce uh, moisture in the air condensing into the, into the liquid at low temperatures. And don't forget to set the under and over temperature controls correctly. So if I was using a liquid with a flash point of say 130 degrees, I would set the over temperature control to protect that. So if the user accidentally increased the temperature, the bath would be made safe. And in the very rare event of a hardware failure, again, uh, the, the situation would be a safe one. So that's it. A very quick, very brief introduction to stirred liquid baths. Uh, if we can help you, if you've got some questions or inquiries, we'd be delighted to speak with you. So thank you very much for watching our video.